Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to some of you. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have for you another wonderful Platform Analytics Academy session, and we're grateful for you taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, as a reminder, this Platform Acad Analytics Academy session is just for you. It's to answer any questions, concerns, uh, share with you all the latest and greatest, maybe something new that we have coming out or something that we've always had, but maybe we want to shine a light on it. So these sessions are for you, and we hope that you get the most out of it. If there's something that you want to hear about and we haven't addressed it or done anything for you in a while on it, and it's relatively new, can you go ahead and shoot us a message and we will look into making sure that that's a topic that you can uh, we can do for you. We are recording these sessions, so no, never fear. They will be posted in the community as soon as they're done. If you or a colleague doesn't have time to attend, we always post the recordings after the session. And please remember to utilize the Q&A window. Um, chat is a little bit harder for us to follow because it just goes in a string. But if you use the Q&A window, we have several panelists that are joining us today, and they're happy to answer those questions as they come in. So the Q&A window is, is a much better way to get your questions answered. As a reminder, this is our safe harbor notice to remind you guys that while uh, we're sharing a bunch of great stuff with you today, there's not always a guarantee that this is going to make it into the product. Um, there's always opportunities uh, that we might present that don't make it or things that turn out a little bit different. So please don't make any business decisions, buying decisions based off of the stuff that we will be sharing with you today. I am Tara Fisher and I will be your host today. That just basically means I'm introducing everyone and then I'm going to be handing off to our wonderful, wonderful speakers that we have today. Uh, both Olga and RJ are joining us from Amsterdam and they will be sharing with us uh, what's new and coming up for platform analytics. So that ought to be very exciting. We also should have Thomas. Dan and Adam, regulars on our team, here to answer questions for you. I'm not never sure if all are going to be here, some are going to be here, but there's enough of us here to answer any questions that you might have. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to take care of you with no issues at all. And with that, I am going to hand off to Olga and she's going to share with you what's new in Utah for platform analytics. So Olga, the floor is yours. I will stop sharing. I think, uh... Robert will start and then I oh, will Robert. Okay, sorry. Here. Yes, thank you, Tara. Thank you, Olga. Um, Olga, were, were you planning to share the, the deck or um, do you want me to share? Okay. If you have the deck ready, yeah, I have it. Uh, I have it but it's... With the latest, uh, um, to the slide to... no, that's not good, but maybe one second. Sorry. Yeah, here. This one. yeah, this one is perfect. Cool. Um, thanks. Thanks and uh, welcome. As, as Tara mentioned, uh, great to have you. Great to always hear uh, from you all the feedback. Uh, before I hand it over, because it will actually be Olga that will be doing most of the talking and most of the showing uh, of all the cool new things that, that Platform Analytics is bringing with, uh, with Utah. I do like to take like five to 10 minutes um, to talk a little bit about product outcomes that we try to achieve. The, um, uh, it will set the whole stage and it will put some things probably in, in better context on the features or the things that you'll be seeing and experiencing why they fit where they fit and, and why we are doing certain things. Um, but also, um, it, it immediately shows a little bit of, of looking ahead, um, those that we are actually now solving in Vancouver as well as beyond. The fact is that anything that we do is always made out of feedback, and therefore these sessions are always great. Um, it's feedback that we read in communities, that we hear from our internal colleagues, maybe the uh, account uh, representatives that we work with, maybe with Tara and Dan and then the whole team and everyone that's uh, that's working together with you. Uh, of course, your enhancements request that you are filing through the ideation, uh, uh, maybe customer facing programs like the Product Advisory Council. And, and of course, a session like this. So any any comment, any question is um, super helpful. It is um, immediately helping us into shaping the product as, as we are building it. The um, that there are some areas that we're, that we're specifically focused on. And this is a slide actually showing the, the problems that we hear. Um, we hear that capabilities are often um, still considered to be limited. We know that they're 
already super extensive, but sometimes they still limit you in visualizing exactly that analytics that you like to do to, to really get into that meaningful insight. Um, so of course, we always want to keep the balance of where extra options might add to configuration complexity. We do also want to continuously add more configurable options just to make it more meaningful for you as the end user, maybe creating or configuring analytics. Uh, Self-service is an important one, uh, meaning to enable uh, you better as um, maybe a an, an more average platform user that's not always coding or not always building analytics dashboards or anything um, to just create something meaningful, uh, being less dependent on admins or uh, analytics users in general. Um, the overall creation and configuration, making that easier, uh, it's related to that, so making it more fluent, um, but immediately getting rid of some of those inconsistencies that we always had, that we always saw, uh, like why is creation of a what we used to call a report so much different than the creation of an indicator widget. Um, or, or even in consumption, when you're consuming analytics or components within, like why is it, why does it feel so disjointed? And a good example there might be the, uh, the analytics indicator breakdown filters versus the interactive filters for reporting. It says here, alt UI, UX, uh, make it look better uh, in times that we are seeing analytics everywhere in our like everyday life. Uh, this, this should be a better consumption experience or so better presentable analytics. Uh, those charts and those dashboards are better modern look and feel out of the box. Uh, and of course, last but not least, I, 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 we, we always keep telling it, the, a good user experience starts with a good performance. So it needs to perform and it needs to be scalable. Yes. So, um, um, real quick, we, we have a couple questions that have come in, Robert. I'm okay. going to just kind of say out loud to everybody, we're going to answer these live uh, during Olga's presentation because I have a feeling a couple of the, Karen, not maybe not yours, but Clayton, for sure, yours will get answered during Olga's presentation. And if not, we'll, we'll interrupt and answer those live for you. So don't think that we're ignoring you. It's just right now, um, I'm pretty sure that those will get addressed. And Karen, I'm going to look into yours. Thanks. Um, yes, as mentioned, the, the, the journey that we're already in already brought us many things. Uh, it allowed us to really rethink uh, the way that we are delivering analytics. Uh, that used to be, I just mentioned it, 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 it could be disjointed. It could be a little bit isolated. And now we um, are at the state where we can really unify the approach of whether you want to create or configure or maybe consume analytics. Um, so it, it is all following this more single consistent approach uh, where we um, like detach the analytical logic, the analytics logic from the data layer, which allows us to do all these things that we always dreamed of, uh, do analytics capabilities on any type of data source in, in the same consistent way, um, like cr that creation of and, and, and configuration of data visualizations or maybe the filter example that I just mentioned. So a single filter component that actually filters any type of data source underneath. Um, so we're bringing new charts with new charts. Olga will show them. There are always also more capabilities around just generic chart options as well as styling. Uh, and by do default, also making them look better, more modern. Uh, we have what we call the platform analytics experience, the platform analytics workspace, which is really function, it will really function as that all under one roof home of analytics, uh, where in the future you will also find your saved, your stored data visualizations, your dashboards, any analytics KPIs, basically a true starting point for any further consumption that you want to do analytics related. Um, within that platform analytics area, there's the new dashboard inline editor. I'm, confident, I, I know for sure that, that Olga will be uh, talking about that and showing that one, which is this super end user friendly way to uh, quickly create those dashboards using those new chart components uh, that we call data visualizations and also maybe other components that you just like to quickly add to a dashboard, anything that you need to tell a uh, this, this data story. There's um, embedded analytics or sometimes we call it integrated analytics 
it, it kind of allows us now to far easier uh, use your analytics as, as part of your applications, as part of your solutions, as part of your, your workflows. So instead of, um, for example, the dashboards are great, but the dashboards are still a separate area where you consume analytics. Instead of that, having your analytics as part of your, your daily work inside the workflow and, and really enabling you as the end user to get that meaningful insight there where you actually do the work and, and get that get that insight and, and enable you to immediately do that decision making there. And then last but not least, there are all these new ways around um, exploration of data about the um, learning and, and diving into the uh, data that's that's there, as well as insights, which is an, an amazing uh, feature that you uh, most likely have seen already um, that you get from KPI signals, which, which functions as this KPI indicator um, a colleague of ours, ours always calls it data noise cancellation, and it's really surfacing just the potential signals that are off the regular. Um, so really showing what's, what you might need to act on. So all that being said, the strategy uh, that we're following, um, keep this please in mind while we are looking at the great deliverables that came with, with Utah. Um, and, and how they work within that context. We will, of course, stick around for all those questions. I'll, I'll also jump into the chat. And uh, for now, I uh, want to hand it over to, uh, to Olga. Thank you, Robert. Um, so uh, today we'll cover the, the highlights from the Utah release of what's new in the uh, platform analytics. Uh, and uh, it will cover today some improvements we have for the dashboards, uh, including some duplicate options with uh, Clay Thomas asking about. Uh, we have new and improved data visualizations and we have some filter enhancements. And I will quickly go through the presentation just to have an overview uh, not easier for you to later refer to this, but then most of the time we'll just do the uh, live demo. So it's always nicer to see. Um, so the first one is uh, enhancement for data visualization uh, for the dashboards. Um, First one, we changed the grid system before you had like 12, uh, 12 columns grid. So the increment of how much you can resize your agent, uh, widget uh, within the weeds was uh, just this 12 stops. Uh, we uh, increased it. So it's uh, 48 stops, which gives you way more flexibility uh, on the more granular uh, sizing, which impacts both widths and heights. Uh, so you can control much better and more precise uh, the size of your widget to get the really uh, the size which you uh, need and uh, cover your needs a bit uh, much better. Then we have um, on any widget which is uh, positions on on the dashboard, we have possibility to uh, to duplicate, uh, so you can easily. Um, have a quick copy of the widget and we quickly adjust it, uh, whether it's filter, whether it's data visualization um, or any other type of widget, um, you can quickly duplicate it on your dashboard. Uh, and uh, as well uh, for the data visualization, if you created your visualization directly on the dashboard and later on you say, hey, I wanna actually save it to the library because I wanna reuse it on the other dashboard. Um, there's no problems. You don't have to start from scratch. You can easily just add it to the dashboard. No need to recreate any uh, any longer. Uh, so that is a dashboard highlights. Um, for the new data visualization, we have three new data visualization. We have the heat map, uh, we have uh, the bubble chart, uh, and we have uh, the gauge chart. Um, so heat map and bubble, of course, is uh, the way to analyze multidimensional data um, and with the uh, with a gauge, it's another way to look at the in the single score where the, it's more qualitative rather than uh, trend. Um, and for the improvements in the data visualization, uh, the top improvements are uh, we added possibility to add the, uh, the icons for your uh, single score. So when you have a lot of scores on your dashboard, you can actually um, have contextual icons for them um, to help user easily find the right uh, single score, not just by the title, but also by the icon. So it makes improve the readability uh, of the dashboard as well as improve the look of it. Um, then 
very exciting features for the uh, for the pivot table. We now support multiple data sources, meaning that you can, for both whether it's indicators, um, you can put different indicators on the same pivot, um, or you can put data um, from multiple tables uh, to compare different metrics across your dimensions. We also added some usability improvements uh, during consumption. You can easily sort uh, on the columns, uh, and so we improve the responsiveness of the pivot. Uh, that can uh, allow you uh, define how you want it positioned, whether you want to truncate, wrap the headers, uh, and some other responsive improvements. Uh, and the last but not the least, uh, we uh, added possibility to add custom messages. By default, if you, if you have no data, especially if it's not single score, you will have the generic no data message, uh, which can be for some users a little bit scary because they don't know what this means and what they have to do now. Uh, and when you create your dashboard, you can you can know that if it's normal to have uh, no data for specific uh, use cases, what does it mean for users? So you can really put a more relevant image to it and more relevant text that user can really comfortably know, okay, what do I do now? Is it good that there is no data? Is it bad? Do I need to do something? Or can I go home and relax? Uh, so that's the data visualization improvements. Um, and... Uh, uh, the last section uh, of the exciting improvements is for the filter component. Um, we improved, there's quite a lot of improvements on the uh, date range filter. Um, we allow to, to have a different views. So you can choose where you, whether you want just to have relative um, relative days only, or you have or want, want only to have the, um, the, the calendar or both. We allow you to configure which relative uh, predefined filters you will have. Um, we allow you uh, to support the uh, the time in addition to the dates, uh, if in case you work with more granular uh, data. And uh, we also persist now the relative date ranges. We persist it as a relative. So if you show last seven days, when you open dashboard next time, it will be last seven days instead of the fixed period how, uh, as it was in Tokyo. And uh, we also improved the... Uh, user experience of the configuration. So it's a bit more straightforward how to uh, configure filters, which uh, chart uh, which types of filter are supported. And uh, we added support for the um, indicator uh, breakdowns as a source. So previously um, you could configure filter which will work only with automated uh, breakdowns with, us, uh, with the support of the uh, breakdown as a source, you can also uh, have scripted breakdowns like uh, bucket breakdowns uh, or breakdowns for the manual or external indicators. Um, so let me switch to the demo. So we are in the platform analytic workspace. Uh, I created um, a dashboard with some highlights for the release. Let me quickly uh, uh, show you. First one is for the uh, for the dashboard improvement. So you can see now, like when I resize my widget, I have way more granular control over, over the size of it. Uh, so it's four times more granular, and I can really achieve the uh, the look of my, uh, the size of my chart uh, in the way I need, which is really nice. Um, I have this nice options. If I want to um, duplicate my uh, chart, I can easily do that. It will create chart right under it with all the configuration. So if you have some filters, especially like convenient for if you have a table as a source with a bunch of filters, as we uh, quite often have in real life, you don't need to recreate it. You can easily just change some configuration. So if I want to, for example, in, instead of pivot, I want to start using the, uh, let's say the time series for these indicators. Hey, Olga, can I interrupt you real, real quick? Yes, please. Um, So I'm going to just say something that I think um, might clear up a little bit of confusion. You are using the dashboard inline editor right now, not this the UI dashboard builder. Inline editor. Correct. Yes. Not the UI builder. So while you can use UI builder for dashboards, we 
So I strongly encourage you to use the dashboard inline editor, what Olga is showing you today, um, because the UI builder is, is a bit more advanced and more complicated. And once you build it in the UI builder, you can't go back to the dashboard inline editor. So be thinking about, you know, we've always encouraged you to kind of map things out before you start building. So be thinking about, do you really have anything serious that you need customized or something that's just not available? That's when you would go to UI Builder. Otherwise, what Olga is showing you today, this inline editor is really, really what you want to be using for your dashboards. And Olga, can you answer for me really quick? Do you do we have any training available yet for this? Yes, we have a training uh available for the, uh, we have a uh, training available for the getting started with the platform analytic workspace, I believe it's called something like this. Which okay. Gives you an overview generally of the platform analytic workspace, uh, quick ways how to create dashboard, data visualization and filters. Um, awesome. and, and then I know Olga, you, and I believe it's either you and Dan or you and Thomas will actually be hosting a lab this year at Knowledge, right? Um, yeah. on- we'll have a several, we're planning to have several, I don't know if it's. Do we have okay, so if you're, I don't you're know if but we are planning to be labs on knowledge several, like one for the, the uh basic usage, like the uh, kind of one-one use cases for uh and one for the more technical users for the advanced dashboard. Okay, awesome. So everybody here, um, if you are planning to attend knowledge, we will have labs, so keep an eye out for those. If you can't attend, we do post the labs and now learning after knowledge. So these are also opportunities for you to learn a little bit more about what Olga's uh, highlighting for you today. Sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to clear that up really quick before the questions built up. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and all the features which uh, I'm showing now are for the Utah release. So I'm focusing only on the features for the Utah release. So they are available for Utah and from Utah. Well, I think there was another question like this, uh, which you can <laughs> mark as uh, answered live. Um, okay, uh, so that's uh, that's on the duplication. Um, and again, yeah, if you decide later, hey, I wanna add it to the library, you can easily do so. You will be prompted to give some name, uh, Can add description optionally uh, and uh, it's saved. Gives you a nice notification. Um, so if I go <clears throat> create new tab and I say, hey, I want to add uh, this from the library, you will see the one I just created is, um, is right here, uh, available for me. Um, going back for the uh, uh, to the improvements in the data visualization. Uh, let's quickly start with the uh, with the new chart types. Uh, you can see we have um, the heat map. Uh, again, the heat map uh, chart will work for all the data source types which support uh, two-dimensional uh, group by, right? So uh, it's currently out of the box. It's supported for the, uh, for the table and indicators uh, for both. Uh, it's everything is pretty much similar as any other chart app. You select your uh, data source. We support only one data source and one metric. You can select your metric, your, the which aggregation you want to use in case of the table, and you select your uh, your dimension, the columns and rows. Um, again, you can choose uh, the sorting whether you want to sort by values or by the name, um, and all the additional settings. Uh, for additional settings, it's just if you want to show the zeros or not when there's no data, and that, that update set is the same for the other uh, for the other charts. Uh, for the presentation, we have a possibility to show or hide data labels. Uh, we have options to uh, define legend, uh, show hide legend, and define its uh, position. Uh, the standard uh, standard ways to position, and you have your color configuration also pretty standard. By default, we have this nice uh, themable blue colors, but you can also uh, choose your custom color. So if you wanted to have a strong uh, purple, you can do that as well. Um, Then for the bubble chart, uh, the bubble chart is, um, I think, the only chart right now which is uh, supported only for the table. Um, 
So you uh, again, you select uh, the, ta uh, the table as your data source, you define uh, the metrics exactly the same as for any other chart. But then for the dimensions, you will choose um, X and Y dimensions would be uh, mandatory fields, which has to be any numeric field, right? It's similar how it's working in the classic reporting for the bubble chart. You select your numeric fields and optionally you can have the, um, the group by of the, uh, of any group by field, right? Any dimension that used for the group by. Um, again, for the for the stylings, uh, it's also pretty standard. You have possibility to um, to show height legends and define its position, uh, as well as uh, define the um, the colors. So, in case you have <clears throat> a group by enabled, you will be able to select a color palette, and if you don't have a group by, you will have instead like a single color which you can choose. Um, so that's, uh, do we have any questions for the current charts while I'm on it? Not for the charts, but we do have a couple of questions. Um, most of them around the duplicate, well, a couple around the duplication process. Um, are there plans to streamline the duplication process of not only dashboards, their format and configuration? position of the report filter widgets, but also the duplication of said report filter widgets in general. Currently, this process is highly manual utilizing in certain state because everything gets wiped out. So the other question is very similar. Uh, what's the uh, duplication process? How is that going to work? So as I showed, like currently any uh, widget on the dashboard you can duplicate and it's uh, will just create a copy directly on this dashboard uh, where it's if it was saved visualization, it will, it will maintain this link. So it will be still linked to the same save data visualization. Uh, and later on, if you change, you can, uh, upon saving, you decide can decide to unlink it or not and have just local copy. If it's data visualization, which just stored on this dashboard, it's just create full copy. So whenever you change, uh, nothing will be impacted. Um, and once you copy, all the settings are copied one-to-one. Um, -one. Uh, you have the same process available on the save data visualization when you um, when you go to your save data visualization. Uh, we have the option to duplicate here as well. Um, as as of now, you do not have option to um, to duplicate the entire dashboard, but that's coming soon. Um, and I'm not sure if there's any other other things which you see as an issue. Um, which I didn't cover. I hope that answers your questions, those folks that posted on that. If not, just please add another question and we will elaborate more for you if we can. And then real quick, um, we do have the content, uh, static content block um, available in Tokyo. Will there be dynamic content blocks? I don't know that I've ever used those before. So I'm curious uh, as well. No, currently we don't plan to have those um, in the okay, inline dashboards. It's like kind of more advanced use case where you which you can achieve in the technical dashboard. Um, okay. I'm happy to learn more about the use cases around them, so we can get more targeted solution because dynamic content blocks were not very user friendly. So we're trying to target inline dashboard for really non technical users and all the components we want it to be easy to use for non technical users. Um, so if you have some specific like frequent use cases, which you think non-technical users should be able to achieve on the, uh, on the dashboard, uh, please share like uh, your insights and we can see maybe to add some specific components for some specific use cases, which uh, fits better to the persona who will create inline dashboards. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, quick, uh, sorry, Olga, if I can quickly jump in there and, and I actually just marked one as live, which is which is indeed related. Um, the, the question was, if certain components would actually make it then into the uh, um, in, into becoming available, um, I think also there it's like if we know that there's a specific use case for components or features within the components that should be uh, living in the dashboard inline editor, the, the easy way to create uh, dashboards. Um, yeah, please please let us know because then we, we can definitely make those available. We get into the state of where many of our use cases that we'd like to solve are 
possible in, in, the, in the technical way, in the UI builder way. So there will always be this option to go that other way, but, they, but as mentioned, the UI builder way to create an experience or a UI with analytics is much harder to do. So if we do have the feeling that we want to create things in the simple inline editor, that there's a use case for that. Um, if we hear them, then, then indeed we, we can definitely consider them to uh, make them part. Great. Um, okay, so going to the uh, uh, next data visualization, uh, the gate chart, also known in the classic as speedometer. But since we not just use measuring speed, chose the gauge name. Um, so it's very similar to the um, function. Of course, it's very similar to what the classic was done. We improved a little bit on the UI and add some new functionality. Um, to improve the readability, accessibility, uh, uh, and different configuration options of, of this chart. Uh, so again, it's um, the configuration of the data is the same for the single score. So you just select your data source, whether it's um, with a stable indicator or anything else uh, which supports single scores, define your metric. Uh, additional settings is just to show zero or not when there's no data. Uh, and then in the display settings, we have few options. It could be either 180 degree or 240 degree. Uh, you have different uh, label size. So the scoring side, you can choose, like it's a relative size, whether it uh, will be big or smaller. So it's again, the large one, you can see you need uh, you would need more space uh, to have to accommodate it. Uh, so you can, based on the size you're choosing for your chart, you could uh, choose which uh, which size be, will be right for it. Uh, the inner radius, it's again um, similar how the dial works. It's from the, its proportion of the in and out uh, the radius. So it goes from 0 0.7 to uh, to 0 0.95, which 0 0.95 will be the thinnest. Uh, and we have the range configuration. Of course, you have a mean and uh, max value uh, you can define, uh, especially good. Um, the good usage of this chart is when you do have max value in mind. Otherwise, it would be kind of hard to define ranges uh, otherwise. And you can define ranges. For the, um, by default, uh, for the PA as a source, if you have target defined, even if you don't configure ranges, we'll get the ranges based on the target, similar way how the PA widgets uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, was working for this use case. But then you can, as a user, you can define it yourself, right? Maybe you wanna have more rounded ranges. You can choose um, number of ranges from two to five. You can choose the, uh, the color scheme. So it's pretty much, do you want to go from the green to red or for red, uh, red to green? This is for the standard colors. Uh, or you can choose to have maybe uh, custom colors. In this case, for, uh, for every range, you can define the color. And for each range, you of course, define your, uh, your limit, uh, the label optionally, uh, and the color. So we can say maybe uh, if we want to have the... To replace the dashboard if I haven't updated it before. Uh, might have chosen the wrong colors, uh, but you can define it that it will be more just on the dynamic way. Uh, and, um, and you can uh, also, um, we, we added the option which we didn't have before to have these labels, right? Because uh, we assume that people know, especially if you use green to red, that people know what this means, but quite often not everybody knows, not everybody can see color, uh, not everybody can understand color. And in different cultures, they could mean something different. Um, so that's why uh, having the uh, the range labels uh, was added as an option. 
you can still hide it if you if you don't want it and you have different options to um to define like uh, if you want to have some labels under the score you can show the metric label itself or you can do the range label so based on the where you are uh, the appropriate label uh, will be shown and also you can make it as a primary so in the this is the use case for this imagine like you have the uh, the performance score or some kind of other metric where the score itself doesn't mean anything to the user who will use it, but they need like, how do I perform? Do I perform good? Do I perform, uh, like, do I need to improve? Uh, and in this case, the score is just, um, just a reference, but the focus is actually on the range where you are. Um, yeah, um, so that's, that's for the new chart type, for the improvements for the existing charts. Um, Real quick, a uh, question came in. Um, can we have different colors? Like if performance score doesn't meet a particular threshold? So this is what the ranges are, right? Like on the, uh, uh, on the gauge, if it's for the gauge, that's, uh, that's how it's defined, right? You can, um, we have these default colors, which would define ah, the, okay. based on the ranges. And then um, based on that, uh, you can see, now I'm in six, like in the middle, and my color of my dial or whatever it's called, uh, it, it's matching to this color where I am. So because I'm now arranged from five to 10, so this section is becoming um, uh, dark yellow. If I would go here, uh, it will become red. If I will be here, it will be green. So this is this how dial. You can do exactly the same for the single score, right? If you want to configure the, for the single score, you, you can achieve the same with the score color or the uh, or the icon color. You can configure the conditions based on the current value. Uh, if the value is more than X, make the color uh, red or uh, or blue or whatever it has to be. Um, so talking on this uh, of the single score. The new setting added in the display settings, we have now a possibility to choose the icon. Uh, so the same, uh, we have the icon component available in the in the UI builder for more technical users with a set of icons. You can go, uh, I can send maybe later that the link for the, um, in the dev portal, we have link for the whole gallery of the icons available. And as a service now, we ship like every release, like more new icons uh, available. At this moment, there is no contribution for the icon, but we keep on uh, extending the library with more and more icon. Uh, so you can choose your icon. You can choose different styles of the icon. You can have uh, with or without background. So you can see that uh, the icon is changing a bit. Um, and you can um, change the, um, the color, right? So what I was mentioning for the, in this case, I um, by default, it will be like blue, uh, but if I change it to the um, to a single color, I can select the color of the, uh, separately, I can control separately the color of the score itself and the color of the icon. So for example, if I wanna keep the score uh, always black and the icon by default, let's say will be blue, but I can do dynamic conditions so that if the score is more than, uh, is greater than, let's say 10, the score color maybe will still stay black, but the icon color will become, let's say red. And you can see this will apply. So you can have the conditions uh, and based on your design preference, you can choose to have both colored or you can have separately colored, choose to be colored only icon or uh, uh, only the, the score or have any, any rules you want. Um, then- That's uh, really cool. Sorry, I was trying to come off mute to tell you that's a really neat feature. I like that. Very good. Um, then uh, one feature I'm quite excited about is for the uh, for the pivot that visualization we support uh, multiple data sources. Uh, again, it could be table or it could be indicator, doesn't matter. Um, and you can uh, yeah you can configure uh, again. We already supported in the last release multiple uh, multiple metric for the same uh, for the same data source, but now you can have completely different data sources that it's much easier to put together. Uh, different um, 
different KPIs uh, or different metrics from your different processes in one uh, easy view. Again, you can have, um, of course, in PA, we have two levels. You can have either two rows or one column, one row. But in case of the tables, you can have up to five row levels and uh, one column in addition to your uh, multiple, multiple metrics, multiple data sources. Um, and we have um, a bunch of settings related to, uh, to the responsiveness. Um, so if you're trying to put quite a lot of metrics, you can decide um, if you want to, um, to wrap your column header or, it, uh, or try to fit it or truncate it, right? So in case of truncation, it will try to make the, uh, the even space for all the charts. And then when it doesn't fit, if you have very long, um, very long header, which you cannot shorten uh, because of the meaning you go under for the more narrow screen, it will just truncate. Versus you can make it choose this wrap and you can also choose if you have, for example, if you use um, assign two or maybe some kind of longer um, uh, elements for your, uh, for your rows, you can choose to, if you want to allow truncate uh, values in the first column or not. In this case, all short, so it's 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 not gonna go to this use case, but this could be quite handy for uh, if you use something uh, longer in that case. And if I exit the edit mode for all the columns, you can now easily uh, sort in the runtime, so it's much easier for the users uh, to analyze the data for uh, for any metrics they need. They can easily see. Uh, where the outliers are, uh, see how the values are distributed, etc. cetera. Uh, any questions? No. Yeah, we just had one come in. Uh, just to be clear, in regard to utilizing multiple data sources, can multiple ServiceNow tables be used as the data sources? With this capability, now feasible, are there plans to streamline the database view creation process? <laughs> you can have multiple, um, you can have multiple tables uh, used. Let me go to the pivot. If I select, uh, for example, I can have incident table, right? Uh, normally you would add conditions, of course, but for the sake of time, let's not do that. And I can add multiple uh, multiple metrics for the same table. Maybe I want to have a uh, count and maybe I want to have an average duration. Let's put some, something as our rows. Um, and I can add another table, right? Maybe I want to see the problems, how also, uh, like which problems do we have? Um, so that's um, that's possible. There is no current plans, as far as I know, to make data, uh, data uh, DB views easier to create. But again, probably we can maybe find some time to explore more where the pain points are. Uh, the, there's still no, different. there's still no option to union, right? When, when I, I know when I hear get asked about using multiple tables, it's normally that they want a union incidents and problems together. Right. Uh, and you I'll just say combine that. it in one column. So it will be still different columns, right? It's a different query. But this doesn't know. make it easier to create a view yet either, right? Like this doesn't even go anywhere near that. But, but this will remove this this will remove the need to do some of that. Okay. So reduce the need for database views, I think is the approach that we've taken. Um so whether it was related list conditions, um, this is awesome, right? It's been this is awesome. Um, and then the other piece that I'd want to make sure that we look at would be to um, understand, like, if I want to report on incidents and problems together, that I just want to report on task where the class is incident or problem. Make sure it, a lot of ways we get out of unioning if we're using the object oriented database model correctly. Um, if we're using extensions in a way that makes sense, then we don't need to union. It's when we didn't build it right and we didn't extend from the right things, and then we run into problems. So a lot of times if I need to union, I might actually go re-architect so that I don't need to reunion. Hope that answers your question for you. Um Olga, real quick, are you or is your demo piece 
because we do have another topic I want to bring up, but I don't want to jump into that unless you're no, let done. Let me try to go a bit faster with the demo. I have a few more items I want okay, to Okay, yeah, you continue with that then, and then I'll bring up the other topic at the end. Thanks. Yeah, the new, um, the new option to have a custom empty, uh, custom empty state. Let's say you have a situation where, um, let's say I have maybe incidents. Let's just take table, which has no data. Um, So by default, you will have this empty state message, which, which is very generic and uh, it can be a bit confusing for the user. So like, I don't know if it's, if it's good, if something is wrong, what's happening. Uh, so when you create a dashboard, you can improve this experience for your end users. And we have this new se uh, section, no, um, no data message. You can choose to have a custom data message. Um, you can um, choose based on the size of your widget, you can choose different layouts. For example, you can do horizontal layout instead of um, instead of vertical. You can customize the image you're using out of all the possible options. Uh, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, it could be complete the task, right? Maybe you're done, that's why it's no data. Uh, and you can uh, adjust both main and secondary message. Uh, And then it's much easier for user to understand that, hey, nothing is wrong. I'm good, I'm good for today. Or other way around, like, no, you have to go actually do something. We don't have data because you need to run some jobs or whatever it is, right? If you can really help your users to understand what is his next step, uh, step is because there, uh, because there's no data uh, for this condition. Um, and um, quickly going to the last part of the demo, um, for the, for the filters enhancement. Um, so first of all, we change a bit experience. When you create a filters, you will first start with selection which filter type you wanna use um, instead of just going directly to the data. And then based on the type we're gonna use, we're gonna simplify for you the further experience. So for example, if you have a date range uh, filter, you say date, you can add a label, let's say date. And if you're creating dashboard based on the uh, performance analytic indicators, you pretty much can finish here. It will work, it's all set up. You can see right away that um, the data to filter is indicators. It will tell you information, hey, it will automatically work with, um, with indicators uh, based on the score date. If you say, hey, I wanted to work with tables, you would also add which data you wanna filter. So let's say I wanna filter the, um, into the table based on the created and let's say problem, problem uh, also based on the created. Um, and you have new options with different uh, filtered view. As I mentioned, you can show calendar with relative ranges. You can have relative uh, a calendar only or relative uh, dates only, depending again on your use case. If you want to be more restrictive, because maybe uh, relative ranges only could be handy when you work with the uh, performance analytic indicators um, and you don't want to allow to select some date ranges which have no scores collected, for example, right? If you have monthly indicators, you don't want to allow to select the uh, middle of the period. Um, and of course, you can also choose um, choose which dates are available, right? Again, if it's monthly indicators, you don't want to have last seven days, you would only maybe will have only options with the months. All the options which were available in the, um, which is kind of available in the platform in the standard uh, relative options uh, in the filter are available here. Um, and we have an options to allow the time selector. Let me just show um, how it looks. When I select here, if I have time selector, I also can select time here. Um, but yeah, it works pretty much a similar way. Um, when I select a relative period, you can see it shows, uh, previously it was showing uh, actually the uh, start and end time of this period, and this is how it was persisted. Now it will actually show you last seven days and it's persisted. So if you come tomorrow, it will still show um, last seven days. Uh, 
And um, if you want to add uh, for, the, uh, for the other feature, um, let's say I want to have a breakdown for the um, For the not automated breakdown, but some maybe for the bucket uh, breakdown on the age, um, I can now do it when I select instead of source type uh, table, I will select indicator breakdown, and here I can select a breakdown. So I want to see age. You will see all the uh, breakdowns. Uh, you are looking for the breakdown, not the breakdown source. So you will see the breakdown, and below you will see the breakdown source associated with this in case you have multiple age breakdowns. Um, yeah, and that's, um, and you have your uh, quickly configured filter based on the uh, NEPA breakdown. I think I covered all of the features. So we all right. can check the questions. We can cover yeah, them. we have a ton of questions, but I want to address something really quick. Um, the migration tool, a lot of folks have asked, how do we get to from the current classic, what we're calling classic UI? Yes, Stephen Rogers, I absolutely concur with you. We all do. Uh, we need to have some sort of glossary of terms out there. But the, the current experience that you're in, if you're not in what we call the next experience, which we have also called Polaris at one time or another, um, is called classic. And so how do you get from that experience to this next experience, which is utilizing the workspaces? We do have a migration tool in the works. It is not gonna be out until it's 100% perfect and can help you move from one environment to the next. But um, RJ can actually elaborate on that a little bit more. If you can quickly, RJ, that would be great. Um, um, yeah, we're I'll, out I'll of time, we've got a bunch of questions. I'll I'll try the uh, I I did answer so if you look at the answer that I gave to Stephen on that he, he's he's right we we talked a lot with uh, Stephen directly and and we heard from many customers of course that to be successful in this environment we need to have the um, we need, we need to have the reports uh, the the dashboards that we created in the past um, so the current state there is um, indeed we were working on that migration something like a migration tool migration app. It needs, and I think yeah, to Steve and I even mentioned 110, 120% complete, not just feature complete, but actually better. Um, and often experiences go even beyond just a single chart. It's the end-to-end -end experiences. You, you came from somewhere before you consumed the chart and you went to somewhere while clicking on a chart. So all those need to be 100%. Um, I'd say it's 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 definitely not Vancouver that that migration tool will be there. The overall guidance now, as similar as we do actually with workspaces, is um, try it out and 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 put your toe in the water, see how it works. If you have a new need for a new dashboard, try it out in the platform analytics workspace. Create a new dashboard there and know that the migration tool for that is coming to enable you to uh, just select the dashboards or the reports that you want to bring over to. To this next experience. Thank you for that. Um, so yes, we we are thinking of you and, and trying to be as considerate as possible. I'm going to try to blow through some of these questions and see if we can answer them that, that didn't get answered in the, the Q&A. Um, is the execution time of the widgets and or whole workspace tracked in syslog transitions or another new table in order to identify poor performing widgets? I, Anyone know? <clears throat> I do know we have um, I, I, analytics. We have, Go ahead. I don't, I don't think we have at, uh, at this moment the uh, per per widget tracking like we had um, the execution time for the sys, uh, for the sys reports on peer widgets. This one is still in um, uh, in the roadmap. Uh, will come soon. So currently, only like the general the queries are. Um, Counted like any queries, any uh, any glide queries. Um, I'm not sure it can easily link to specific re report or specific dashboard at this moment of that. But that's a good comment. Okay. Um, and then uh, any uh, let's see. Will ServiceNow ever have an option to select one date so we can? Ooh, one date so we. Can do indicators by begin and end dates versus just ranges? 
you uh, what 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 do we mean by that uh, anonymous i need you to uh yeah. embellish yeah, the, yeah date range so i could just manually select date ranges instead of just saying what last week or last three months you, you can select you do that now right? you can do it now yeah Oh, awesome. And you can make all the peer widgets in Tokyo, I believe, um, to follow that range, not only the time series, but also the single scores. And it can aggregate for the selected period. If it's daily scores, uh, it will aggregate for select period as a sum or average or show the latest score for the selected period. And then did you have any uh, new changes for reporting? This seems to be more focused on... Uh, no, this is for both, right? Reporting and from well, 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 uh, reporting always worked, right? You just you just select which table, which fields you're gonna apply the date range filter to, and it will just filter. I see uh, that. Uh, I think Mike has a question. If you can have different same table in different filter conditions, uh, like I think he's answering. I think he's answering someone else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Shwana says, uh, are there any updates for reporting? And Shwana, this covers reporting as well, because we now we just have the single uh, data viz uh, and building dashboards, and you just choose your source if it's going to be, right, Olga? Yeah, but, yeah, that's what if the question about the classic reporting, like if this report, uh, report is right. added, we don't have any changes in that. So I think now the full focus to to make this one amazing and help you to move here. Uh, so there's no currently uh, improvement. But reporting there. remains the same. It will work as it's always worked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then Raymond, is there a place to put designer level comments on reports, not end user visible, where we can document who requested this, why we made a choice in filtering, et cetera? Like almost like a admin hidden Locking, field. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. So if you are using the uh, safe visualization, right, you have here the uh, description field, uh, awesome. which is by the, like, if you don't share this visualization directly for the editing, they're not visible on the dashboard anywhere, right? And if you don't share this visualization with users, uh, it's only within your like admin team or uh, BI team, nobody will see it. On the dashboard, you just see the name, uh, or like actually the, the title, right? Separate. So, so they wouldn't see the description um, if they shared the visualization for it to be seen, but not edited. Um, so like we have a big change, right? In the next experience, you don't need to share visualization to make it available on the dashboard, to make it visible on the dashboard. You share visualization only uh, if you want users to view it in the, visualization designer directly uh, or you want users to be able to add this visualization to their own dashboards for example to find it in the library right mm -hmm. in this case, when they go to this item inside of visualization designer they will see the description right it's not uh it, it's not hidden right but yeah they uh raymond saying that there used to be an option to have end user visible um i'm guessing that's not an option anymore I never heard about this. I need to look into it. <laughs> Raymond, let us know. What's uh, before my time, maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe it's well, actually thinking, quite foreign to me, too. Maybe Adam knows. You're thinking like when you hover over the question mark on the uh, on the on the widget icon in the update. Well, that's, right? that's user visible. That's user visible. Yeah. Right. Uh, we just still have it. And then that, I thought that was. Yeah, you will have here like this help text thing. But that's different. This one is something. That's it, he says. <laughs> that's, the reference. that's it. So whatever you were just doing. That one we have, yes. <laughs> so you can or can't? You can add a description which will be visible for the user, right? It would be but visible, mm -hmm. so it's not private. Mm -hmm. And if, but not but they're not edit, like if you don't have edit rights, they cannot change it, right? They, they, it's just information. And this one is description, which is kind of just in the artifact, which is pretty much not in the view, normally not visible by the users. Because if I add something here and I add this uh, on, uh, I can, it goes automatically actually. Are they synchronized? Never mind. They're synchronized for some reason. I think the answer. We don't, we don't have the like 
really secret message for some special role. <laughs> yeah. But we can learn more about feedback and edit. Yeah, Raymond, go to the idea portal or maybe send us some screenshots of what you're talking about so we can talk about it offline. Because I don't think we even realized that that was something that users used. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good point, though. Oh, yeah. And we are, we are. Field to add. I mean, just. We are at time. So uh, let me just really quick thank Olga and Robert for being part of our, um, oops, share my screen. Thank you for being with us today um, and uh, and like taking the time out of your, of your day to share all this stuff with you. We've answered questions as much as we can. Um, we will follow up on some of those other ones we didn't get a chance to get to, and we'll try to um, get them into the community as posts. So always be checking our platform analytics community page. Also remember that we do have a Platform Analytics Academy community page where we post all of these um, with the content and recordings included. And you can also always go through that if you miss something or you need to freshen up on something. This is a great catalog to enhance your skills or, or remind yourself of something that maybe you didn't use all the time. Uh, we do have some recordings available too. Platform Analytics Academy, we've got pro tips, some recordings that are available on getting first value with performance analytics. And um, our lovely panelists that have been talking to you today are part of these recordings and have put to get, put these together for you to make sure that you hit that first value or understand why the product was developed and how it was intended to be used. That's where it's a really good spot to go and get that information. Um, also, remember, we have labs and training in our now learning. So that's always a great resource for you. And uh, we do have PA advanced on demand courses also available to you. Um, you can access them through all of this information that we provide on the community and um, through our training courses. And there's also other academy sessions within our organization, platform academy, mobile virtual agent, et cetera. We have tons of academy sessions going on to make sure that we're giving you the most that you can possibly get from using our leveraging our products. So and take a chance, poke around out there and see if there's anything that's interesting for you. And if there's anything missing, like I said before, please shoot us a message and we will do the best I can um, to uh, get those sessions put together for you because that's why we do all this. And a reminder, knowledge is coming up May 14th through the 18th in Las Vegas. We do hope to see you there. This team of panelists that has been talking with you today will be there and would love for you to come by and talk to us. As always, we love talking to you directly and being face-to-face -face again in all one location is super exciting for all of us. So we hope to see you there. Come find us, say hi. Say hi. Uh, maybe we can have a little snack or drink together. So looking forward to that. And thanks again, everyone, for your time. Have a great rest of your day.